our dual sensored camera is gonna be the future. Uh, all right, let's talk about it. Okay, I have bullet points for this one. I'm not just gonna wing this video. I wing all of them anyways. Anyways, okay, the dual camera that ZW came out. This is an opinion piece, okay? What do I think of this camera? Is this gonna revolutionize the market? Is everything gonna change now? <sighs> yes and no. I kind of hope so in ways. Okay, first let's, let's do some history. 2004, 2005, this was tried before. Spig came out with a dual sensor camera and it was pretty much a failure, okay? It, it, it just didn't work. There were a lot of complaints about it and just about everybody who is familiar with that camera is gonna bring it up. There were three different complaints that were logged against it. Number one is that, well, he just couldn't find enough stars with your guide sensor. Okay, it just was too faint. Number two was that filters, they just, if you used any kind of filters whatsoever, it blocked basically all light to the guide camera. And number three was that the image circle of most scopes wasn't large enough to cover that extra sensor that, you know, you, you can't put right next to it. You gotta put it a little ways away because of the electronics and so forth and just the way sensors are made. I actually heard of one guy who used one of those big cameras. What he did is he actually took an X-Acto blade and he scraped the coatings off of the top half of his filters so that it wouldn't obstruct the guide sensor and it would only filter light hitting his actual imaging sensor using one of those big cameras. <laughs> I find that funny, okay. And, but like all three of those complaints, really? I mean, it's been 20 years, folks. A lot has changed. First off, image sensors. Image sensors are way, way better than they were 20 years ago. That's like comparing the performance of a Model T to a 2000 Mustang GT. Yeah, so image sensors are just way, way better than they were. I know I personally actually, on all of my guide cameras, I actually use an infrared pass filter, which only allows in the ultra deep red end of the spectrum. And that's because red wavelengths are less affected by atmospheric scene conditions. And with today's guide cameras, I mean, I have no problem finding enough stars. Uh, and I've used an off-axis guiding system, which a lot of people complain doesn't, uh, doesn't pick up enough stars. And I've never had a problem, okay? But I'm using newer guide cameras, okay? I'm not using old tech. So odds are, if somebody complains, that guide cameras just aren't sensitive enough for this kind of thing, well, they're probably talking about tech that was 20 years ago. Now, now the second complaint, the filters, okay? Well, again, so much has changed with filters. I mean, we now have, we now have dual bandpass filters. That was something that just didn't exist 20 years ago. Basically, designers can say, hey, I want a strip that's gonna come through here, a strip that's gonna come through here, and maybe this gap will be 50% transparent on the transmission spectrum. And they, they can basically just draw whatever line they want on the graph, and the engineers who actually produce the filters can make it happen. So uh, there's a lot of different options out there. I mean, for example, you could put over the main imaging sensor's window, an IR cutoff filter, and then over the guide camera sensor window, no IR cutoff whatsoever. And then basically make a batch of narrowband filters that would let through hydrogen, sulfur, or oxygen, or whatever, or whatever combination you want, but also allow through infrared. And the window that would protect your main imaging sensor would actually block that out which would basically give you a complete narrow band filter effect essentially, while at the same time the guide sensor would still be allowed to reach those infrared photons of light. So yeah, there's just a huge number of possibilities that are possible today, okay? And, and ZWO has 
very good resources in the filter industry. They produce a lot of filters and so forth, and they sell a lot of them too, so I think that they could do that. So, yeah, that, that, that excuse also I think is kind of null and void. And then the last excuse is that, you know, you need a big imaging circle, okay? Well, once again, I think people were thinking 20 years ago and not thinking today, okay? Because today's scopes are quite a bit different than they were 20 years ago. First off, the imaging circle on most scopes has gotten a lot bigger, and a lot of that is pressure because people want to use bigger sensors. And so the manufacturers have been trying to enlarge that. Now, most manufacturers do inflate the numbers on how big of an image circle their scope actually produces. I know I've verified this and found this with basically every scope that I've ever used. But nonetheless, the image circle of today's scopes, especially a lot of the new refractor, refractors, like the Petsville type refractors that are coming out, these have big imaging circles. So having a, another sensor that's you know mounted a little ways from your main sensor, that's really not a big deal anymore. And we don't need perfect stars on the guide sensor. You know, all we need is some illumination. You know, they could even be rather distorted looking stars. <laughs> it still works. And then, and then there's the RASA. Okay, the RASA is something that didn't exist 20 years ago when SPIG tried making a dual sensor camera. But that's now a reality, and it's actually very popular. And folks, at f2, oh, come on, you could throw any narrowband filter you want on your camera, you're going to find plenty of stars at f2. In my opinion, every single excuse that we had to not use dual sensor cameras in the past has really been made null and void it, in basically all respects by today's technology and today's products that are out there. I'm not buying one, not yet at least, because they don't make a mono one. <laughs> if they make a mono camera, I'm definitely kind of interested. But yeah, for now it's a one-shot color camera that ZW has come out with, and I really hope that they are successful. And there's a couple reasons why I hope that they're successful. Number one, I think it's going to push the market in a direction and it's going to push research and, and development of other things that will help astrophotography that are, that are gonna broaden the horizon, so to speak. That's, that's my number one reason, okay? It's gonna set a good precedent. The second thing is that it makes astrophotography easier and this is a hard hobby, okay? And anything that we can do to simplify and you know just just make this hobby easier for people i am all for that now and i want to talk about something this is a uh, om1 related this sensor here has slvc ec technology built into it this is this uses an imx 472 sensor two sensors aren't actually always going to be necessary to do this type of guiding where you know, your guide chips are basically pixels right next to your main imaging chips. Because this guy right here has the ability, at least in hardware, okay, nobody's unlocked the firmware and actually developed software to take advantage of this yet. But these, this sensor and the OM1 actually has the ability to take like, let's say a strip or a section of the sensor and designate it separately from all the other pixels and to read off the two sections at different rates. For, so in other words, we could, we could have the left three quarters of this sensor could be reading out an image every five minutes at its full 12 bit depth and doing it at whatever gain. While we could have a strip on the right hand side of the sensor that is designated to reading off an image every two seconds and then sending that feedback to the computer where the computer would process it, look at where the stars are, make guiding corrections, send those pulses to the mount and so forth, all while the main section of the chip is doing your long exposure. That's possible within this, this, this sensor right here, the IMX472. And it might be, and I know it's in a couple other sensors that are out there. I just didn't bother looking for a list to do this video. 
But yeah, there's there's tech and this this type of mentality of where we actually guide using chip pixels that are right next to our main imaging pixels that in my opinion is is just a better way of doing things it's going to take care of things like flexure it simplifies the whole process it makes it easier for people to do and a lot of the steps can be just taken out and really simplified in a lot of ways through software so i i hope that this is a successful thing and that dual sensor cameras become commonplace and if you're a rasa guy you definitely should check one of those things out all right so that's that's my opinion piece on the new zwo 2600 mc duo and now oh i'm gonna go in and get some sleep because i've been up since 2 30.